180 degrees south, or as you call it, 180 south. <laughs> I, it's funny that I call it that because that's not what you're supposed to call it, I guess. It's 180 degrees south. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, ha, what was the story of that? How did that come to be? So that's a, you got time? Sure. <laughs> um, it's worth taking, Chris, it's Chris, worth taking Chris the time Chris is better than, uh, Chris brushed over some of this in his, um, he's better at staying on point and stuff. I, I tend to wander, but. It's worth um, doing a deep dive into. Yeah. So the, the way, so that, that's, that was like from, from like talking about it to it actually happened was like 10 years. The Malloy's and I are sharing a house in Hawaii. It's like 2000 or 99 or something like that. Um, we're, we're, I'm over here in Ventura visiting Chris and his parents and Amy Kumler, that girl that we know, she comes up to me and she hands me this uh, VHS cassette, this, you know, those big things. And she's like, hey, I think you guys, you got to watch this. And she goes, it's, it's been in the padding on your vault for like 30 years. You're not supposed to watch it outside the company, but I, I snuck it out of there because I think you guys would really appreciate that. Chris and I, what the hell? And we look at it and it says Mountain of Storms on it. We're like, what is this? So we go to his parents' house, plug it in the VCR, and it's his film Mountain of Storms. And it's when Yvonne and Doug Tompkins drove a van from Ventura all the way to climb Mount Fitzroy in Patagonia in 1968. Crazy. Yeah, crazy, right? Crazy. And Chris and I, I'm getting chicken skin thinking about it right now. Chris and I are looking at this and we're just going, whoa. And it's it's um, all filmed in 16. I mean, the doing it is crazy, but the fact that they had the foresight to make a film out of it. Yeah, so they thought, now we've learned all this later, but this... Doug Tompkins thought this was going to be their endless summer. Okay. And they're like, we're going to make a killing. Like we're, you know, endless summer had come out we're, and they they wanted to make the climbing version in the summer. Yeah. And Doug being the good business guy, he started North, North face and stuff. He was like, we learned in retrospect. He's like, this is our endless summer. We're going to make a shitload. And they made this film. Lito Tejada Flores had never shot 16 millimeter. They gave him a Bolex. And they just take off on this trip and they film the whole thing. And it's original soundtrack, cheesy stuff. Like they're driving and like the song's like driving with my friends, right. you know, like it's real corny. And there's spots where it says insert commercial here and it's just blank for a while. Like it's, it's a full movie. And Chris and I are going, this has been sitting in the vault. This is their entire brand. This is Doug Tompkins. He just sold North Face. Yvonne hasn't started Patagonia. This is the reason he started Patagonia because he went on this trip and came home and said, I got to make clothes that withstand a Patagonia winter. And he called it Patagonia. And then Doug went on to say, you know, to, to buy huge swaths of land, you know, 10, 15 years later and develop all the parks. We're like, this is like a huge, this is the beginnings to all that. We couldn't understand why is this sitting in a vault, you know? Yeah. So Chris and I were spinning over it. We gave the film, the video, cassette back to the girl to Amy and we're like we're tripping on this and so Chris had already made a few films and been doing really well with that and I had just get gotten into climbing and I was starting to look at all these climbing films and just seeing what's cool out there because I was like Chris you should make a climbing film that'd be epic and we had already kind of talked about that because I was trying to find all these old climbing films and see what's cool and what's not and 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 Chris is Chris isn't a real climber, but he's a, he's an enthusiast, and we've always really loved that world. And we, and we we're like we saw this, and we're like we got to make a climbing and surfing film because that's what they did. They surf their way down, and then they climb, and and so we started talking about this, and this is in like 2000, and we started talking about making our own film, whether it's in the spirit of them or maybe even documenting them. We don't know, but we talked about it. Fast forward a couple of years, we now we're employed by Patagonia and Chris and I started talking about it again, like, hey, we work with these guys now. Let's, you know, we should do a film. And so Chris pushed, Chris kind of got his shit together and I kind of um, pitched it to the whole, to the marketing team there. And they, they were like, yeah, let's, let's do this. So um they started down this road of uh, making a film at Patagonia and be like, you know, the first real, we were seeing it as like the first real film that Patagonia is doing. And I mean, it's, we're talking about their, their history, you know? And so it's funny how it all went, but um, climbing and surfing, we wanted to um, either drive down in a van kind of like they did or do something similar. And, where I was going to fit in 
we I wasn't quite sure. Like they're gonna have like Dean Potter. I don't know if you know climbing mm-hmm. too much, but Dean Potter and his wife at the time, Steph Davis, because they were Patagonia couple. They were gonna be like the climbers. Keith would be like the surfers. And then they needed a partner for Keith, but I was probably going to be the person that goes in between. Like I could climb and then I can surf and I can write and I can take photos. I'll kind of be bouncing around. Maybe that would be my position in the project, but they needed somebody on the surf side. So, and Chris was getting all this pressure to put a girl in there and all this stuff, uh, a woman in there. And, uh, Chris was struggling because now he had this uh, project and there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen and he wanted to treat this right because we have so much respect for Doug Tompkins and Yvonne Chouinard and the history of Patagonia that we, Chris, really wanted to do it right. And um, I can tell he was, it was kind of getting out of his hands a little bit and not the way he normally makes surf films. He makes surf films with his friends that he knows and he's intimate with and he can, and that's how he's always done it. And now people are sending him reels and he's getting all these pressure. Like people are giving him videos. You got to hire, you know, why don't you get this person? And I could tell he was struggling. And then um, one day he came over to my house and I said, how's it going with all that? And he's like, oh, it's kind of frustrating and blah, blah, blah. And I go, well, you'll figure it out, you know? And he goes, well, I think I did figure it out. And I go, what, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, I think I found the person that we're going to bring on this. Like, He's like, I can't do this whole, like, you know, I'm interviewing people I don't even know for this film, you know? And I go, yeah. And he goes, I think you're the guy. You're the guy. And, uh, and I was through me for a loop for sure. But he's like, look, he goes, this has been your story as much as it is my story, as much as it is anybody's story. He's like, this is your dream. You're, you know, Yvonne, you're friends with Yvonne and you saw the film with me this is your dream as much as it is anywhere. That's the story. You know, that's, he's like, if I'm going to tell a story there, that's the story. Yeah. You know? And I was like, (laughs) I mean, it's the actual story. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, this is the actual story. And I was, you know, I was a a deer in headlights, you know? Yeah. Cause like, fuck, you know, I've never been in front of the camera like that. And, and, uh, he goes, I don't really want to do it to you because he goes, things will probably be different for you. You like your, you like your private, you, you're good as you are. You don't really need, yeah. you know, but you, you'll be on the map more. You'll be in people's spheres, you know, and th- he's like, I've seen it happen with my, you know, I've stressed my brother's relationships. I've stressed my friend's relationships. In this. So he's like, I kind of don't want to do it to you, but just so you know that this is the story that I want to tell, you know, and I was like, oh my God, like, you know, what am I going to do? And he goes, think about it, you know? Um, and I did think, I didn't say yes. I, I thought about it because I didn't know if I, you know, want, really wanted to do that, be in front of the camera. And, and it's funny because um, Chris was like, I, and he goes, I don't really want like a polished person. I don't want somebody that's like, hi, I'm, I'm Jeff Johnson. And I'm, you know, and I'm like, well, I think Chris got that, <laughs> you know, I, he got what he wanted. I wasn't a polished um, character, but um but yeah, so it was, it, it, it shifted suddenly and all of a sudden that's how I got involved in that, on that side of the project because it, it wasn't supposed to be that in the beginning. It was, was going to be an entirely different scene and then all of a sudden it shifted. So much of um, <clears throat> that film um, was seen by people who weren't into surfing and weren't into climbing. Mm. And like so many of Chris's films before that, you really had to be into surfing to – care about it to, yeah, even, yeah, yeah, to yeah. even know how to find it but it had so much broader appeal it was like a documentary that yeah. was just about something that you didn't have to be into but you could appreciate what it was because it was a really yeah you're not well-made watching it film. to see some really good surf. i mean you'd see keith surfing you see some good surfing yeah but it wasn't a surf film at all like and i didn't even. know anything about climbing but i could respect and appreciate the climbing aspects yeah, of it as yeah. well you know yeah and so how did that change your life being in front of the camera and actually being exposed to people on Netflix, essentially, or <laughs> viewers who were using Netflix. Did it change your life in any way? Was there a noticeable yeah. difference? Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, it, um, yeah, in a good way. Like it, it's, it's not like a, the type of movie where I got a lot of fame from at all. You okay. know, it's just a small, that, I love the way that movie turned out. Like, you know, Patagonia at the time didn't have a lot of a big PR you know, um, department. So it wasn't like the marketing for that film was really small and it didn't really, it, it did well for what it was, you know, right. and Chris got all this pressure as he was making it. And, you know, we were down in, 
in this little room down in Venice, like, I mean, I did VOs for like nine months. You wow. Know? Like, I mean, and he was getting all this pressure to get into to these fil fest film festivals. And he's like, I just want to make the film. And like, you can do, like, with all the, the cooks in the kitchen, he's like, just let me make my film. You can do whatever you want. But I'm, so he was being forced to make rough cuts for all these, like, um, film festival and he's like it's not even done yet so we were being tasked with these fire drills to make like a rough cut so we'd be making this film and then all of a sudden we spend like a week doing vo's and stuff making a rough cut and it was really delaying the whole process because we had 200 footage 200 hours of footage to make an hour and a half film and we knew the story but there's so many stories there like how do you break a line you know i mean there's entire adventures where keith and i got lost on this river in patagonia and like all the stuff that didn't even make it into the film. So Chris was really trying to navigate that. And then he'd get these fire drills for these film festivals. And Chris, I keep hearing him saying, he was like, I just really need, I just need to make these films. I just need to make this film. And if it has legs, it'll, it'll shine. And, and that's how I do it. And so I like how that film ended. And I like how it turned out where it's kind of, it made a splash. And then it kind of became this like under, it's almost like this underground kind of thing. Like, it's not like a big blockbuster thing. It's just, it is what it is. It's like this cool film. I love the history of it. And, and I think what it represents is great. And as far as what it did for me, it's not like um, um, I became famous or anything. I became known in cer certain worlds. And I, I, I've had a couple, of, I have some funny things like where people have, come up to me like in New York a couple of times, you're that guy in the, you know, which is just hilarious. And the funniest ones, for some reason, I Whole Foods on the way back from LAX in line at Whole Foods, I've had it dozens of times. I don't know, it's it's that type of customer it that is, goes yeah. to Whole Foods. It's exactly One time right. I was in line, one time I was, or, I was just paying for my stuff and this guy's like, that voice, I know that voice. And I'm like, oh, here it goes. And he's like, you're the one who sells guy, yeah. So it's it's not um, it's just a little bit of recognition yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's enough and it's not too much and it's I think it's done well from like you know my my photography and stuff right. where my name is out there and stuff so it's been cool it's it's um, it's been a benefit and um, and we're really proud of that whole we're Chris and I are proud of it I mean he made he directed this film that was a real big challenge you know that was a different ball game for him you know he had a lot of cooks in the kitchen it just wasn't him yeah he's documenting these people that he has so much respect for and he doesn't want to blow that no matter how much pressure he's getting from each side so in the end i think it turned out it's cool it yeah. is super it's cool. um and it's yeah it's i like that it's just kind of this it disappeared for a while off netflix now it's back on oh, amazon it? yeah it's netflix was an early investor in it there there's a deal between magnolia and Netflix and it was one of their early films that they invested into like a documentary so it lived on Netflix for a while and then it went off and then now I think it's back on Amazon or something cool but um yeah well one thing that I haven't watched that film in a while and I should but um I don't even know what the question would be I just think it's so amazing that you have access you talk about Yvonne Chouinard and we are aware of that but Doug Tompkins is an equally as fascinating figure oh and Incredible. just an insane resource. I think about yeah. the amount of time that you've gotten to spend with those guys yeah. and lessons that you have probably been able to glean from them. Oh, yeah. yeah. They totally. are fascinating figures. Fascinating. Philanthropi philanthropists, yeah. athletes, businessmen, all of it. And their stories. Like, you know, really fortunate to spend time with those guys, like, away from everybody, like, out I know climbing and sleeping in tents and stuff. You know, they're like an old married couple just talking shit on each other. You know, it was classic. And um, yeah, I was really fortunate to spend time with those guys in that area where it all began. I know for them, you know, 40 years prior, you know, it was uh, it's so admirable. Chris and I just pinched ourselves like that, that whole project. Um, it was really the ultimate for me. I can't speak for Chris. Um, I know it was a big deal for Chris, but for me specifically, it was like, it involves everything I like to do, surfing, climbing, my biggest heroes. We worked with all of our friends, you know, all of our friends, you know, you know, we hired Scott Sowens, Dave Holmesy, Danny Motor, Jimmy Chin came down and, and shot some of the climbing stuff. 
half the crew were like really close friends, like, and Chris and I are like best friends. Like, and we made this thing. It was like, it was an amazing thing just, just to do in our lives. So like that, that point, you know, I remember Chris and I, um, we got to drive after it was all done. I'd been gone six months and we finished, finally finished filming this thing. And Chris and I were driving on dirt roads for, I think we drove for two days to, from deep Patagonia on dirt roads. And there's an old truck in there, an old Chevy that we rented. And, um, <laughs> we don't even smoke cigarettes, but we got cigarettes and a 12 pack. And we're like on these dirt roads for like two days, just, and we're just talking stories, just like, man, that was a great six month journey. We were just on, you know, and, and uh, yeah. we hadn't even started editing yet, you know? Yeah. And an amazing but, piece of art to have to show for it for yeah, posterity's so it, sake. Yeah. It was a yeah, um, cool time. 